All right, folks, hello and welcome back to Downstage Gaming. I'm your host, Josh, and this is part 14 of our B-Sides Let's Play of The Letter. Now, you'll have to excuse me. If you're if you're here as these videos were coming up, uh, I've been gone for a little while, about five days, uh, due to illness, unfortunately. I um, feel much better now, uh, but still could be a little congested. Maybe a cough here or there, so you'll have to excuse me if that happens. But I've been gone for a while, so catch-up is uh, important for me here. So when we last left off with Rebecca, uh, we had asked Ashton out uh, to join us at uh, Hannah Wright's housewarming party uh, to be our date. And Ashton agreed almost certainly only because of uh, his investigation to Luke and wanting to protect us from Luke. Uh, and then we got some news that Isabella could be coming out of her coma today. Uh, and so we came over, but then that quickly turned sour. It seems like that's not gonna happen. Things took a turn for the worse. Ashton got all upset, and now we have just sort of chased after him and are hoping to have sort of a, hopefully a real heart-to-heart -heart here. We'll see. I find him minutes later in a hallway not far from Isabella's room. He sits alone, still his gaze trained on a cup of coffee he cradles between his hands. But I know him well enough to know he'll never take a sip of it. Too bitter, he'd say. He prefers one dumped with a shitload of sugar. He's only keeping it for the warmth. Occasionally, he'll sway the cup, lightly, only to send the dark liquid swirling close to the edge. Like disturbing its still surface will show him all the answers he needs, all the miracles he's hoping for. If it provides him any, he makes no mention of it, when I take the empty space next to him. He doesn't bother moving either, or returning my greeting, with a slight nod, like he always would. Under the corridor's harsh lights, he appears older like this. There's a deeper set to his eyes, a hollowness not present before, and it's most certainly not due to exhaustion anymore. Seeing it so openly displayed in such a manner, however, ha however, unease trickles into me. A small fear my own efforts, any words I can come up with, won't be enough. That only the cruel possibility I've seen back there will be all there is left to say. Nevertheless, it's still worth a try. That coffee is going to get cold soon, if you don't drink it. A waste of money, if you ask me. I mean, wait, wait, did he pay for the coffee here? I would kind of assume a hospital would just give you a cup for free. For a fleeting second, he takes his eyes off it, glancing at me from the corners of his eyes. It doesn't last too long, but in that short exchange, it feels as if he's searching my face for something. And when it finds nothing of it in me, he merely lets out a breath and holds the cup out to me. You can have it if it bothers you. No thanks. I already drank a cup this morning. Besides, their coffee here tastes like shite. I've had enough of it these past few days to last me a lifetime. Well, jeez, why don't you just say something to him, then? I think they're using the same brand, you know? Uh, the, the one Isabella likes so much. You're handling this very well so far, Rebecca. Great job. I've not meant to bring her up, but she's woven herself into our lives so much that even talk as simple as this has something to remind us of her. Now it's pitching back towards unsafe territory, right into topics I'm hoping to avoid. <sighs> We're both bad at this, aren't we? <laughs> you noticed that just now? Afterwards, Ashton immediately falls silent again, the good humor in him gone. I follow soon after, unable to string the proper words to keep this going, and an uncomfortable air sets. No surprise right there, all this time we've been skirting around the issue, the hard truths we're forced to deal with. It's a way of coping, co it's a way of coping contradicting the kind of people we both are. No wonder we'll fall apart at some point. And if what happened today suggests anything, it'll be easier for us if we steal ourselves as early as now. Even if a tiny part of me still wishes to believe, there's simply too much working against her now. But is saying such a thing appropriate? Given the situation, with him like this, I'm afraid doing so will bring more harm, good, attention, good intentions aside. Sometimes, I resent myself for getting caught between making such calls. I think... man. That is tough. I, I mean, I... I so, I'm, like, 95% certain that he will like this option more, that she'll get through this. I don't think he wants the hard truth right now. The question is, does he need it? And I think the answer is no. I think he knows, right? I, I, think, I think Ashton is not an idiot. <laughs> uh, I, I think it's important to keep the hope alive right now. 
That's what I think. She'll get through this. Yeah. So I pull back, rein in the cold, hard facts, as well as every truth that will hurt. All in favor of an echo, and frankly, a pale imitation of Zachary's reassurances. She'll... she'll get through this. I wish there's more conviction to my tone, or at least a hint of certainty to it. But try as I might, I don't know if I can still put my faith in those words. At some point, perhaps I did. For the image of her lying still in that bed has become a permanent fixture in my head. When picturing her back on her feet is as, as easy as breathing, or when the re reality of her situation hasn't sunk in yet. Now that it has, every comforting word, heard or said, leaves a bitter aftertaste. I hate myself for trying to keep that hope in him, while I can no longer convince myself of it. It feels foolish and hypocritical in every way. <laughs> Ash chuckles in spite of it. Not without a hint of his fatigue, but still light and unreserved, as if remembering a memory he's keen on. <sighs> She's rubbing off on you. Who? Belle? Please, what pulls apart? A few years ago, maybe. But you're more alike than you think now. Otherwise, you wouldn't be saying that. Maybe it's just Zachary. You know, the big guy can also be like that. It's why Belle and him get along well. You don't hang out with him that much, though. I, I don't know why this is written as why where Zachary and Becca can't be friends, too. In fact, if another person were to look at you and Scaredy Cat, they'd probably think she's the childhood friend, not me. That gives me pause. More than anyone, he's the person who I'll always have a place for. He should know that. Yet, I can't bring myself to refute it, or even be angry at him for the suggestion. There's only laughter when the question comes. Are you jealous, then? <laughs> Not really. It's hard to be... when it's someone like her. It answers everything and nothing. But the hushed note his voice takes speaks volumes. Of things he will never openly state. Of questions we never thought to ask until now. How different would it all have been without her? If she never moved next door. If she never dropped her passport that one autumn morning at the park. If Ashton had not found it. If she never had the unfortunate luck of finding something horrid left in that sofa. Endless possibilities, but at the heart of it are two things I will hold true. One, these are what-ifs I no longer want to know the answers to. And neither does Astrid. I should probably tone down on the teasing after this. Probably? <laughs> I might still do it. Maybe once or twice a month. She makes the weirdest faces when she's annoyed. I mean, it's a part of the relationship, you know? As, lo as long as she's okay with it, which she seems mostly. <laughs> it's priceless. But I'm sure she'd appreciate that. You were pretty merciless. Yeah, I owe her an apology. For a lot of things. I think... I think I will. Apologize. I mean, if... When she gets better. We both lapse into silence after, sitting side by side, simply enjoying each other's company, like how we often did as children. Let's see. Okay. <laughs> nice cup of joe. Okay, and this is this is the day. This is the day of the house party later at night. This is the day Marianne gets captured. Okay. But it is in this moment the second truth resonates. Things have changed. Sometime between meeting new people and letting them stay, something has shifted. Although he may never regard me with the same longing he has for her, this man, this dense, clueless man, offered constancy my own family couldn't afford to give. No matter the depth of the anger and hurt I've harbored that night, I doubt this man will ever lose his place in my life, and I in his. And even with the hollow ache his next words bring... I just wish I could have said it to her a long time ago. Before any of this happened, I do care about her, despite everything. Only a hum of agreement makes its way to my throat. An acceptance. I know. No further words are exchanged after that, and perhaps it is for the better. We have some place we need to be at tonight, and it won't do good to brood on those things. The quiet stretches on further until Zachary shows up in search of us. By this time, the seconds and minutes have already blurred together in my mind. It must not have been that long, though, from his expression, dark circles under his eyes, red rimming its edges, it's as if he has spent another night on the vigil. Ashton tenses the second he catches sight of it, a multitude of expression flashing across his face. Confusion, apprehension, dread, all in under a minute, till it settles back to his usual impassive mask. If given the chance, he'd probably run back there to see for himself, but Zachary raises a stalling hand before he can think of it. The nervous line in his mouth gradually melts into a smile, or one resembling it, 
Lately, seeing a genuine one on any of us seems almost like a luxury. Nevertheless, Ashton lets it ease him. There's nothing else, after all. She's stable now, but they've placed her back in a coma. She'll be under observation for the rest of the day, so no visitors for now. I am curious to see what kind of ending Isabella gets in, in this, this playthrough. Still not the best news we've heard in a while. I don't think it's what Ashton's hoping to hear either. We're back to square one, back to another waiting game with no clear end in sight. Of course, none of us mentions it, even if the meaning's all too clear in our heads. There is still, however, relief in this, something we carry when the three of us leave the hospital for now. If that alone will be enough remains to be seen. At least tonight, I'll have something to help take my mind off things. Hopefully, where this all started would provide the answers I'm looking for, but it'll be one less thing for me to worry about, if so. Party time! <laughs> Tone shift! Except the whole thing's off to a bad start, and all of a sudden, whenever Isabella claimed dwelling in this mansion becomes the least of my concerns. Severely underdressed is a total under- okay, I think we've seen- nope. Nope, different. Okay. Cars worth more than my own apartment, child and home combined, line the mansion's front yard. Men and women ducked out in their best, also flocked near the entrance. Most are eager for the festivities to start, while some are simply idling about, enjoying the warm afternoon sun before it sets. But once the woman standing at the front porch speaks, their undivided attention immediately shifts to her. Presumably Miss Wright, from the confident manner she holds herself amongst present company. This, despite keeping a far simpler appearance than the rest of her own guests, than the rest of her own guests or not having her husband beside her. A trait worthy of utmost admiration at best. At worst, she's the envy of every woman, the subject of every gossip in Luxmore. Welcome, welcome everyone. And Mom said we could have been good friends. We've definitely seen. Okay, all right, again, this is this. I can't even picture myself mingling with the kind of guests she has. Though I admit she does seem familiar now that I've seen her this close. Memories of sitting in a vanity not mine, being dressed in clothes too fancy for my taste. They flit briefly in my mind until her cheerful tone rises above the buzz of her enraptured audience again. Please, make yourselves at home. I wish I could share her enthusiasm, really. But being surrounded by all this extravagance, for the lack of a better term, merely makes me dread how the rest of the night might go. Also, knowing there might be some truth as to what lies inside this place helps drive the unease further by a notch. Ashton, on the other hand... Be careful with Shirley, alright? For someone who abhors gatherings like this, he already seems right at home, standing with an air too lackadaisical as he watches the valet drive off his bloody car. Can't you at least act with a bit more shame? Becca, if I find a single scratch on Shirley, there will be hell to pay. Those guys know what they're doing. They're handling cars worth more than your precious Shirley. My disdain- yeah, but do they love it, Becca? Do they love their car like Ashton loves Shirley? My disdain has likely shown beyond the tone of my voice, quite possibly in the form of a grimace. <laughs> he chuckles, a rare moment where mirth and amusement danced across his features. Try as I might to pull up a stern glare, I can't help but join him instead. There's something in the lightness of it, how easy this kind of interaction falls into place when we don't let feelings get too involved, in spite of being stuck in a situation we're not fond of. It brings back memories. However, the moment doesn't hold. All of a sudden, Ashton grows quiet. Chief? An odd expression flashes momentarily across his face, though he blinks it away before I can figure out what it is exactly. Ashton, what's- Sorry, Becca, I just saw someone I need to catch up with. Longtime friend. Yeah, longtime friend. Doesn't help that he isn't even making an effort to spare a glance my way when he answers. Instead, they're focused at some point in the crowd. His gaze, darting between people walking past us until a small frown forms in his face. Wait, Ash, what about- This won't be long. Be careful while I'm gone, okay? I meet the smile he hastily throws my way with a frown of my own. What does he mean by that? But before I can ask, already he's turned his back from me and is walking away, without a single explanation whatsoever. In some desperate effort, I try to catch up to him, only to know what warranted this sudden departure and his odd warning at the end. Hey, be careful! About what exact- Only for my attempts to be interrupted by a muffled ringing from my pocket. Mom's cheerful voice greets me as soon as I answer. Okay, now? Yes, okay. But when the call ends, I get to look up, Ashton's already heading inside. With a sigh and admittedly a little disappointment, I tuck my mobile back into my pocket and follow after him. 
so much for a date. Even with familiar company, this is somehow shaping up to be a terrible evening. Yeah, I don't think there's any version of this night that goes typically, like, quite well. If I didn't know any better, I'd say he only agreed to come with me for another reason. I think you I may be swear, right. I swear, the next person who asks, I'm dancing the night away with. Ashton can go fuck himself. <laughs> All right. But his reason's clear to me now. Still, the heat of a blush creeps up my cheeks, and I'm now ready, despite wanting it to happen so badly myself. All right, so, well, he's not entirely clueless about it, I know. He won't be harboring affections for someone else, if, someone else if he is. Only those that aren't of his own escapes him. What was it again? Aaron? I haven't even sorted these things out for myself. Uh, so, uh, this is a nice party, Miss Wright. No wonder I lost him to someone else long before my own feelings are known. And then... Okay, Luke Wright shows up, we have the Rochelle incident. The commotion doesn't go further, despite the drunk woman appearing like she has plenty more venom to spill. In a little while, security shows up, escorting her out. Apparently, she's the chief inspector's wife, too? I said, I, I hope we get some closure on this whole nonsense at some point. <laughs> I would really like some to just know if there's any truth to this or not, because I feel like there must be. As if this whole thing can't get any more fucked up than it already is. What a mess. The damage has been done, and beyond the repercussions this will bring, I'm more worried about Hannah. Maybe Luke, too, in part. I've seen the man that hides behind his self-importance, and is someone who cares for the person who stands beside him. No matter how questionable that is now. After all, no anger is worse than that of a scorned woman. He's lucky, though, that he is not to be the object of it any time soon. That his wife loves him enough not to believe any of the woman's drunken prattles. Take that troll up out of here immediately, and see to it that she isn't allowed to hear, or anywhere we hold any authority in Luxborn. Hannah's outrage is a strange sight to witness, after those smiles and the grace she has carried herself through the entirety of the party. Like this, her eyes burning bright with theory, I don't doubt she can do so much more. Ruin the scandalous woman if need be. Oh, believe me, that's where her monologue is at right now. Shaming her is already an act of mercy, generous enough coming from her. Everyone, please go back to enjoying the party. Don't let that mess of a woman ruin your night. You heard her? Strike of the band, maestro, and let us dance like fireflies in the night! Yep, when she turns to Luke, eyes gleaming with hope, something feels off. Something I can't quite place. Hers is not the face of a person who so ardently loves. There's a lack of tenderness in it, an absence of warmth and sincere affection. It's the kind that constricts, suffocates. Well, that was a mess, wasn't it? And you handled it magnificently. It happens. We are very important people, are we not? No one seems to have noticed it, however, and at their command, music resumes. There's a brief low, a reluctant pause before the place comes to stir again, but shortly, the buzz returns to the room. Dancers have once again taken to the floor, and their guest excited chatter begins anew. Maybe it's just my imagination? Milady, would you like to dance? No, there's definitely something very wrong going on here tonight. With pleasure, my prince. The unsettling feeling in my stomach remains, however even as the strayed atmosphere dissolves into merriment, even as I watch the couples lose themselves in the moment or the people around them join them in it. It grips me all the more when, once I leave the hall, the last glimpse I catch of Hannah is her smile, a thin, unearthly one spreading across her face, her soft features. The porter closes the door behind me with a soft click, but all I hear from it are the chilling whispers, those that seem to echo along with another familiar grin in my mind. Well, don't worry about that, I suppose. The brush of fresh air against my cheek does little to dampen the nervous edge in my bones. Away from the rush of the party, I just feel bone-tired. It's late, I've accomplished nothing of what I've come here for, and Ashton's nowhere to be found. I'm not sure what pisses me off more. That he ignored me the whole evening and might have just left without saying anything, or knowing he obviously has some other motive for being here. Can't he at least trust his own friends for that? He didn't have to lie to me. He's not even answering his phone. That man has always been difficult to contact when he's out. But you think he'd at least have the decency to keep his lines open if he's going to wander off on a party. One that he happened to attend with his friends at that. I left the call ring. I let the call ring for nine more times before cutting it off. 
Nine. <laughs> I swear, every time somebody calls in this game, they call way more than any I would ever do. Like, if somebody hasn't picked up by the second or third time, why even bother? No use trying to find someone who refuses to be found. Can't get home on my own. I can get home on my own. I don't need him. He can just... Becca, where'd you go off to? If we're done here, let's go. How dare you? My mistake. The second his voice cuts to the Chris Knight air is that I've allowed my annoyance to get the better of me. Fuming, patience forgotten, I whirl around and march towards him. One accusation after another piles up at the tip of my tongue, ready to, be, ready to be hurled at any moment. There's no hesitation holding me back when I fling at him. That straight face he keeps as I do so doesn't help my temper, my anger, either. It only makes me want to slap some more sense into him. Shouldn't I be the one asking you that? Get him, Becca. Punch him. Becca, I've been waiting here the whole time. I told you I hate parties like... And before that... Where have you been the entire evening? Right then and there, I might have forgiven him if he'd shown some ounce of remorse for leaving me like that. Maybe he could have looked away, given me a sign that my assumptions might be right. He doesn't even need to put them into words. A single gesture of confirmation is all I need. Rather, what I get is the same impassive look. He does that whenever he can't disclose anything. He does that whenever he's lying. In the face of it, amidst the thick tension, a frustrated huff is the only thing I can summon. Be that way. Fine. Suit yourself. No more words. After everything I've seen and heard tonight, I'm already too exhausted for those. So without speaking any further, I simply walk past him and stomp over his car's tight. I take my giant feet and I crush his tiny little Shirley. Although before I can pull open the door, he calls out, one hand outstretched, a gentle weight on my shoulders. Wait, Becca. Oh, don't you dare. Don't you even try. He pauses, his brows furrowing and lips curving into a slight frown. I can almost see the gears turning in his head while he tries to piece together everything he wants to say. Before, perhaps, I might have waited patiently for those. He's not a man fond of using words to express himself. More often than not, any gesture of honesty will only come out blunt and coarse when forced. But today, for one reason or another, I simply can't summon that forbearance. Ashton, if you're just going to waste my time again... Becca, listen. I don't know how else... That much is obvious. Why don't you just take the whole bloody night? Go on. I can wait until next year. Better yet, why don't you just keep it all to yourself like you always do? It's not like... Rebecca, will you hear me out first? I feel like this time around, Becca has more reason to be this kind of unreasonable in dealing with him. I don't know. I feel, I feel like we're, we have a lot more context for that to make sense. The silence I can offer him, but whether I'll believe what he's about to say is still up for debate. A very long debate. I honestly don't know how else to put this. I'm aware your parents have some kind of history with Hannah Wright, and somehow you're friends with her. You have some sort of relations. But you should stay away from these people for now, especially the husband. Oh, don't worry. Our relationship with Luke Wright is doing very poor this time around. Who? Luke? His expression deepens into a scowl at my mention of the name, but whatever opinion he has, it doesn't immediately voice. Still, something about it has greatly displeased him. I think we've seen this? Yeah, because we did this one before, I think. I think we said, what does he have to do with this? What's Luke got to do with it? All right, we got a long bit to go here. Okay. Yes. Care to, oh, no, we did care to explain your reasons. Okay, so maybe he liked that then. Okay. What does he have to do with this? Oh, what does he have to do with this? Yeah, figured he wouldn't like that. I thought we picked the other one last time. Well, whatever. It's not a question without merit. Though the man can be quite abrasive, sometimes downright nasty with his words, you can't simply accuse anyone by virtue of that alone. And it is an accusation, no matter how much Ashton's phrasing downplays their meaning. What right does he have to tell me who I should associate myself with? Without even bothering to tell me his reasons at that. Plenty. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry, Ashton. I'm allergic to your bullshit. Just trust me on this, Becca. <laughs> Don't you Becca me. That doesn't answer my question at all, Ash. You haven't answered any of my questions, in fact. What's really going on here? I want to hear it from him. If we're going to go down this route, I want to hear it straight from his mouth. Because whatever he thinks of the man, I haven't found any reason why I should be wary of him. Sure. <coughs> Excuse me. Sure, we started off on the wrong foot, but he's a decent guy when he tries. 
I feel like this should reflect more of our bad history with him than it is. A simple explanation is all I want. Is that really so hard to understand for him? The situation's complicated. One mistake and you guys could... So, we're back here again. More secrets? <coughs> Why can't you be honest to me for once? He's a dangerous man to be around, Rebecca. He's got a gun. Really? Care to elaborate on that? His because wife from what is I've seen, the only dangerous thing about that guy is his audacity to cheat on his wife. Why are you defending him? Who said anything about defending anyone? You know, I'm getting really worried about you guys. First it's Zack, and now you're... Why is everyone getting angry at me, even though all I'm trying to do is protect you by being a complete a-hole? Oh, you're worried? Somehow even that concern feels empty to me, even if it's from him. You care? Really now? If you care, then where were you the entire party? It's a good question. That doesn't matter right now. You know I can't simply... Forget it, Ashton. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to talk about this anymore tonight. Speak to me when you're ready to stop spouting the same bare-faced lies. Ashton jerks back as if I've struck him. For a fleeting moment, something akin to hurt darts across his features, his eyes narrowing and hands closing in tightly into a fist at his sides. Sides. It does little to lull my ill humor, because in the next second, his answer sounds nothing of the apologetic tone I'm expecting from him. Fine. A little regret would have been nice. Fine. My anger, I don't even notice when I've climbed inside his car. <coughs> real, uh, real difference here between these two pages. Not until I've slammed its door behind me with as much force as I can summon. <coughs> oh, gosh, excuse me. We follow soon after and shortly we're on our way back to the city. Yet even with city's bright lights welcoming us and the dense, somber air from the mansion still lingers. Alright, and that's gonna have to do it for now. We will have to see the aftermath of our, uh, little fight with Ashton here next time. Until then, this has been Downstage Gaming. I've been your host, Josh, and I will catch you all next time.